everyone and welcome. My name is Chantel, and this video tutorial is an introduction to some of ActiveHDL's debugging tools. So ActiveHDL has an assortment of debugging windows that can help the user track down errors during simulation and during the compilation process. For this introduction video, I'll be showing the console, processes, watch, and call stack windows, as well as breakpoints and the list viewer. You can access these windows by going to View and selecting the windows you want to use, or just by clicking on them in the main toolbar. For this video, I'm going to be using a sample design called DataPath. You can find this by going to Help, Open Example, and it'll be inside of VHDL Designs. Now make sure that the design successfully compiles. Now the first debugging window you want to familiarize yourself with is the console window. This window allows all active HDL tools to output generated messages, like when we just compiled here. You can have separate tabs for different generated messages like warnings and errors by going to Tools, Preferences, Console under Environment, and Add Additional Console tabs. If an error occurs inside of your code, like if I delete this value, and compile. You'll see that the console window will display an error message and the source code with the issue will automatically pop up. Clicking on an error message will take you directly to the source of the issue and this feature is known as cross probing. This is especially helpful for times when you compile all files and multiple errors from multiple files pop up. Now we'll fix the error and recompile and once the compilation is successful, you can see that the error is gone. You can see how cross-probing helps making debugging after compilation easier. Before talking about the other debugging windows, I'll cover breakpoints first. They're very useful because it allows you to step through parts of your code during simulation. And for breakpoints to work, we need to go to Design, Settings, Compilation, and underneath the specific language, for this one, it'll be VHDL. Click the Enable Debug checkbox. Let's compile one more time to apply the debug setting. Now I'm going to set a breakpoint inside of Counter so I can see how it's functioning during simulation. To set a breakpoint, just double click on the line of code within this gray column. You can then check and edit all your breakpoints through the Breakpoints dialog box located in the Simulation options. I'll now initialize the top level test bench module and now I'll run it. Notice that when the simulation runs, it stops at the breakpoint. Keep clicking on run and it will continue to hit the breakpoint again and again. You can see messages of when the simulation stops inside of the console window, as well as the values updating inside of the structure window. Now that you have a general idea of breakpoints, Let's move on to the other debugging windows. The watch window is designed to display values of selected objects in the simulated model. While we have our simulation running, I'm going to add some signals from counter into the watch window and step through the code for a bit using the breakpoint. As we're stepping through the code, note how the changes in the values of the signals are happening. And also in the watch window, you have these column info of the name, the type, value, the last value, and the last event time. And then when you see a red exclamation mark, that means an event occurred in the current simulation cycle. And keep in mind that these values can only be observed when the simulation halts. So be sure to use breakpoints or step through your code. Now I'll close the watch window, and now we can move on to the next window, which is the processes window. It displays the information of a list of processes currently being used in the simulated model. And the term process refers to any concurrent statement modeling a sequential process, like process statements in VHDL. Make sure that your simulation is initialized, or else you won't be able to access this window. And then here's all the column info inside of the process window. You have the label of the process, the hierarchy path, and the status of the process. You can also 
right click and show all or show only active processes of the current design. Right now, I'll just leave the show active checked. And all the processes in the process window are executed in the order they appear in the window. Looking at the status, if you see ready, that just means that the process is scheduled to be executed within simulation cycle. And after execution, it will change to wait. These ready status processes are also considered active processes. When it says wait, the process is waiting for an HDL item to change, or it's waiting for a specified timeout period. Let's restart first, and when you restart, take a look at the process window and see that a number of processes has changed. And then let's hit run. Once you hit run, notice how after hitting run, the processes that are ready change again. And you just keep on running again, and the active processes change every time you step through your code. Now let's restart the simulation again and exit the process window. The last debugging window I'll be showing is the call stack window. Like the processes window, it tracks the current processes running in the simulation cycle. But with this window, it displays the values of the local objects and formal parameters of the processes subprograms, like VHDL functions and procedures. For this design, it will be the write results procedure inside of the testbench file. I'll now run the simulation and I'm going to keep stepping through the code until write results appears in the call stack window. Now you can see the values and you can also choose the subprogram that's currently running in a process of the simulation cycle. Doing this opens up the source code with the selected subprogram. You can see different information columns for each item in the list, such as the type of item it is, its value, and the last value. And if you like it, you can even edit the value of an object by double clicking the desired entry in the value column and changing it from there. Now let's close call stack now and restart the simulation. I'm going to clear all the breakpoints as well, start a new one, and then add all our test bench signals. And now I'm going to run again. You can see while it's nice to have a visual display of all the test bench signals, it's kind of difficult to see all the values we want to look at all at once at a given time. But with list view, instead of a visual waveform, we can present simulation data stored in the binary simulation database in a tabular format. To do this, just click on new list view and add the same test bench signals to that list. Now you'll see all the simulation values of all signals through the entire simulation time. By right clicking within the top row, you can remove the hierarchy label so you could see only the signal name and you can adjust the column sizes as well. And this concludes this introduction video to many of Active HDL's handy debugging tools. Hope these will help you all during your debugging sessions. And thank you guys for watching.